Okay, here's our second video about chapter five, and uh, we're going to get into some more uh, interesting probability here. Um, it's still in what, again, like I said, we used to call uh, simple probability. Um, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, Venn diagrams a little bit. So I think most all of you know about Venn diagrams because you live in the internet age. Um, but if not, the idea that it is, you know, uh, multiple circles and we think about how they overlap. And in probability, uh, Venn diagrams can be really useful as you think about what, um, what you're uh, focusing on. The idea of is there overlap or not is going to be really important to that. So um, anyway, this one is just silly off the internet. But um, what we're going to be thinking about here, though, is the idea of how um, different uh, events stack up as we think about probability. So the first one is this idea of events being mutually exclusive. So um, mutually exclusive events are ones where both of them can't happen. So if I say, what's the probability I roll a one and what's the probability I roll a three? Well, on one roll of the die, I can't get a one and a three. I only get one outcome. So those two events are disjoint. What that means from a probability perspective, it that we can just do simple addition. So if the probability of rolling a one is one sixth and the probability of rolling a three is one sixth, one sixth plus one sixth is two sixths, and thus um, one third, um, that's how we can add together mutually exclusive events. But if the events are not mutually exclusive, meaning that they have some overlap in the middle, I often call this a football of overlap because I'm weird like that, um, we have to do something more complicated. And what it is, is that if we say, what's the probability I draw a heart and what's the probability I draw an ace, the ace of hearts is counted twice. So if we say, what's the probability I draw a heart and there are 13 out of 52 cards, and I say, what's the probability I draw an ace, there are four out of 52 cards. Well, four out of 52 is easy, 13 out of 52 is easy, and that would be 17 out of 52. But because I counted the ace twice, the ace is this overlap, I need to subtract that overlap so that I can uh, get to 1652, 16 over 52, which is the probability of drawing an ace or a heart as we do that. Okay, again, it's not super hard to do, but it's a little bit complicated to think about, right? It's just subtraction and addition as we do that. So for events that don't overlap, it's simple addition, but for any event, we just add the two together and subtract the overlap. Now, of course, these two formulas are kind of the same because if the events are disjoint, if they're mutually exclusive, then the probability of both of them happening is zero. So they can't both happen. So in a sense, we're doing the probability of rolling a one and the probability of rolling a three is a third plus a third minus the overlap, which is zero. So that's how we do that. Um, just for some uh, vocabulary, the complement is the opposite of a thing. So if I say the probability of rolling a one or a three is one third, the probability of not doing that is one minus a third or two thirds, right? And again, you probably didn't need a formula to do that, but we do use this notation with a little c and we use the term a complement to describe that. All right, so Right? We can list all of the different outcomes. We can calculate the probability we roll a one, that's one sixth. The probability we roll an even number is one, two, three out of six. The probability we roll a multiple of three, that's a three or a six, that's a third. Um, we can do that. Now, are A and B disjoint? Well, if I roll a one, I didn't roll an even number. And if I rolled an even number, I didn't roll a one. So in that case, they are disjoint. That's not true for each individual number. We could think about, well, if the probability I roll a multiple of three is one third, then the probability I didn't do that is the complement is two thirds. Okay, and so we can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. So we can say, what's the probability I didn't roll a one or I rolled an even number, right? And that starts to add things up pretty quickly. Drawing the Venn diagrams actually can help. Um, I literally do that on my piece of paper when I'm doing things, and you can see I'm not very good at drawing here with this, but um, I think that technique actually works really well. So even as you're taking the second test, if you want to imagine that far in the future, having a piece of paper that you can scribble pictures on is actually a very handy thing to do. Um, 
And again, we can write out all those probabilities as we do that. Um, here's a data from a study. Um, again, this is real data now, but we found that in that study, 51% of the teens identified they were female, 14% of the teens gambled weekly, and 2% of the teens identified as female and gambled weekly. So we can start to break down these uh, probabilities in more and more detail. And again, this is still simple because we're just doing addition and subtraction. We're not doing anything fancy to it, but you can imagine that it gets pretty complicated pretty quickly. All right, and I'm gonna make a separate video for the next section, so I will stop uh, here.